former president Barack Obama came out uh, and uh, and basically like went after call out culture, right? And uh, and he said um, it's more about being as judgmental as possible. And uh, he's quoted to say the this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff. You should get over that quickly. I do get a sense that sometimes now among uh, certain young people and this accelerated by social media that the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people and that's enough. Like if I tweet or hashtag about you didn't do something right or use the wrong verb then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself. Man did you see how woke I was? I called you out. So that's a Obama talking about uh, cancel culture, and then he keeps going to say, uh, the world is messy. There are ambiguities. People who do really good stuff have flaws. People who you are fighting may love their kids and, you know, share certain things with you. That's not activism. That is not bringing about change. If all you do is casting stones, you're probably not going to get far. Here's the complicated part about this. <laughs> Philosophically, I don't think he's wrong, right? I, I don't think he's wrong. Um, because I, I have my problems with call-out culture. I do think that it, it is not as productive as it would seem because I, I think it's a half measure. That's really where I see call-out culture to be. I think call-out culture is a half measure, right? Um, to come out and, and uh, call somebody out and then just sit back and, and be like, well, I fucking, I did it. That's, that's it. Nailed it. Canceled. Right. Is like, that's not, that's not doing anything. That's not moving society forward. Um, I see it as, a, as, as a, um, as a very negative action. Uh, but it, it, but that's because it's, it's, it's only a half measure, right? It's the downward part of the circle. And now we can, we can work back up and actually do something about it. Right. And, I see this all the time. I see this in people uh, supporting certain candidates and trashing other candidates. Um, I, I recently had uh, a, a big experience with, with my support for Tulsi Gabbard, and a lot of people uh, got very upset. You know, there was a lot of uh, Russiagate conspiracies that were thrown, thrown out there again, and uh, a lot of people... Once again, thanks to the way the mainstream media calls it, call, uh, you know, utilizes call out culture, the corporate mainstream media uh, was throwing a lot of articles out there about her um, troubled past. And her troubled past is something that Tulsi Gabbard herself has addressed. Uh, she has addressed this numerous times, several different times. And she's come out and apologized for it. Uh, the the way that she thought about the LGBTQ community that's that's where her troubled past was right um, that her uh, dad was uh, a um, anti LGBTQ Hindu activist and she came out and said look I made mistakes and I had a pretty closed off worldview and now that my worldview is a lot more open I am willing to accept that I made uh, mistakes in my past and I am I am trying to correct those mistakes and move forward in a positive direction to uplift a community that I that I didn't uplift in my past that I um, now see that I, I should have the entire time. And that's what she's done, right? Her legislative record proves and shows that she has uplifted this community, right? Yet, people still call her out and get stuck in that. This is the half measure, right? They're like, calling you out. You have an anti-LGBTQ plus past calling you out. Well, she doesn't have that anymore. She learned from her mistakes, right? She, she understood that the words and her actions caused harm to a whole group of people, and that is not what her life philosophy is about. And she changed her views, and she took action to move the movement in a positive direction. She fights for LGBTQ plus rights all the time. In fact, the human rights campaign... She has a hundred percent rating. A hundred percent rating. Uh, I think she's maybe one. Uh, very few candidates have that. Hillary Clinton, who is the person that um, was smearing her and created this whole big buzz about her, um, 
she up till 2004 was still backing doma was still saying that marriage was only between a man and a woman 2004 and now i still don't know if she publicly comes out and champions the lgbtq plus community i might be wrong about that but but i have not seen it and i have not seen her take accountability for her words in the same way right so so me bringing that up is not just a call out it's me saying that look you made a mistake and you have not done anything to rectify that mistake you have not you have not addressed uh, you have not acknowledged you have not taken accountability for it tulsi gabbard has so the call out culture in that in that respect uh, I I think Obama's right. Is is you know people are flawed. I, he, he's not wrong about that. I think uh, I think we 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 have a hero complex in our society. We need these heroes in our society. That's what that's what we look for. We put all of these movements on the backs of of one person, right? Like we put it in 2016. It was like the entire middle class movement was going to be on the back of Bernie Sanders, um, and when it failed, the whole country kind of obliterated uh, itself. And, and the left got very fractured, and that's kind of where we are, right? There, there was the, the Hillbots, and there was the Bernie Bros. I hate that fucking term, that Bernie Bro. But that's kind of where it was, right? The reason why this, this thing kind of bugs me is I, I feel like Obama's making an excuse for himself. And Obama, in, in, in the way that he called out call-out culture, uh was kind of judgmental and shitty like like he's just like yeah you're just you're 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 just saying a bunch of politically woke stuff you're you're being pure right look medicare for all is not about purity it's about getting health care to a bunch of people that don't have health care it's about making sure that the citizens of your country are fucking taken care of that is not purity get making sure that prisoners have rights not purity that's just that's just taking care of people taking care of people is not purity right and uh the idea of never being compromised. Well, look, everybody's going to be compromised, right? Uh, like I, I, everybody has flaws. Everybody has issues. It's how you deal with those issues. It's how you say, I have issues and here's what I'm going to try to do to better myself. Um, I, I hope you will allow me the opportunity to do that. And and sometimes people are like, no, we're not going to allow you the opportunity to do that. But if you want to go ahead and keep doing that anyway, go ahead. And that's, that's just the way it is. Um, and I hope that last part made it sense but obama's not perfect right and he's just sort of just like hey i'm not i wasn't perfect the world is messy messy there are ambiguities people have flaws i've got flaws yeah you're damn right you had flaws and it kind of sounds like you're you're just like hey i got flaws you know don't worry about it i did the i, I did everything that i could like don't even worry about it yeah you opened up a surveillance state that you haven't taken like accountability for you uh you with one hand said that we need to do something about addressing climate change and with the other hand uh signed a bill for exxon to go drill elsewhere deported the most amount of immigrants in this country and then kept saying dreamers act we need to grant them amnesty your flaw seems to be the fact that you are a wolf in sheep's clothing and then you come out and you chastise people that come out and say that you're a wolf in sheep's clothing by saying that we are all part of this woke call-out culture when really we're just, hey, it seems like you're full of shit and just because you're very articulate and elegant in the way you speak doesn't mean you get to get away with all of this bullshit. It, it, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but... <laughs> But but that's I mean that's what I I look at it as right and then he goes on to say like oh you're, the, if all you're doing is casting stones you're not going to get that far right that's not activism that's not how you bring about change yeah well neither is you being hypocritical about the way that you say things and your actions you can't just say that you want to uh, help immigrants and then deport m more immigrants than last year's presidents combined put it in an organization that is now destroying people's lives ICE. That's not bringing about change either, and not and that is not activism either, and and I feel like this statement is basically people saying I'm not is is Barack Obama saying to people I'm not perfect, and you shouldn't expect me to be, you shouldn't even expect me to be close to being perfect, uh, I'm fucking awesome. 
I had all these challenges that I came through and I overcame them to get into the most powerful office and then uh, basically maintain status quo while preaching that I'm going to be this, uh, you know, fucking mascot for hope and change. And then you weren't. I mean, the reason why we're here, the reason why we are in this current situation is because people felt betrayed by Barack Obama's presidency, because by the end of the Bush presidency, everybody fucking realized that uh, what was going on with our foreign policy was basically a sham. We had been dragged into a war on a lie and all, and basically like our economy is collapsing and uh, and nobody is helping out the people. And then here comes uh, Barack Obama, uh, and he was like, hope and change, hope and change, hope and change. And everybody bought into it. And then when he got into office, it was like, oh, well, the Republicans are kind of being dicks, which they were being dicks. But then eventually, as the years kept progressing, it was just like, oh, you're just sort of this neoliberal status quo where your cabinet is picked by Citibank, and now that you're out of office, you're getting paid $600,000 to go give nice speeches to fucking Goldman Sachs. Very similarly to Hillary Clinton, who was your opponent in the primaries. It's just like that, this is not call-out culture. This is literally saying you have, you betrayed the American people, didn't take any accountability for it, and aren't looking to change. People like Tulsi Gabbard, people like Bernie Sanders, people like Andrew Yang, when they fuck up, they take accountability for fucking up and go, here's how I'm going to use this position that I'm in to uplift a community that I fucked up on. It's so interesting to me what people choose to bring up about people's past, even though the, 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 the past is not what represents certain people in the, in the present, right? Like Tulsi Gabbard's past doesn't represent who she is now. And to make an argument that her past is representative of, her, of who she is now, of how she has acknowledged her, her wrongdoings in the past, and move forward from it to uplift and be a uh, be a positive voice for these movements and just to keep equating that with this past mistake she made that's the negative aspect of call it culture but to come out and say you are neoliberal status quo that basically said they were going to do all of these amazing progressive things and then did none of them but we shouldn't blame you that's not the same thing that's not call out culture being, that's just factually accurate. That's what I have a problem in, in, in this situation. I have my problems in call out culture, but the problem is Barack Obama is making excuse for himself. Barack Obama is making excuse saying that you can't call me out. You can't call me out. You're not allowed. That's what I see with, with, with the speech. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and uh, checking out this episode of The Dispatch. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. Please subscribe and share this episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, uh, if you enjoyed the comedy in this episode, you will probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I've got live stand-up comedy dates coming up in Columbus, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, Morgantown, West Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, Asheville, North Carolina, Knoxville, Tennessee, and Johnson City, Tennessee. For my entire tour schedule, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com, to see if I'm coming to a city near you and grab your tickets. Hope to see you guys at a live show. Thanks so much.